Tonight on The Proof Is Out There, a man claims this is the sound of Bigfoot. And it made him sick. I feel good. The Mars probe catches something inexplicable on camera. Really closely resembles a bird in flight. And a real life Spider Man helps save this baby's life. We have super altruists among us. Around the globe are videos. What the heck is this? Photos and sounds that defy explanation. Is it some kind of unidentified object? A plane that was literally frozen in the air. What are they? Some sort of bizarre mutation. Extraordinary claims need extraordinary proof. I'm Tony Harris, and as a journalist for more than 30 years, I've followed the facts where they take me. Now I'm bringing that spirit of investigation to the world's strangest sounds and images. We'll analyze each one with top experts. It's a credible case, it's a credible video. And pass a verdict on what it is. This video was clearly faked. The proof starts now. Good evening and welcome to The Proof Is Out There. We've investigated recordings of alleged Bigfoot sounds before, but new claims suggest the creature may have a special infrasonic ability that causes deeply disturbing symptoms. So listen closely, just not too closely. It's April 2020 in the woods near Scranton, Pennsylvania. Chase Floyd, a science teacher, is investigating mysterious howling and whooping noises that he started hearing the night before. Chase continues to record as he explores the area. He now suspects the noises he's hearing were made by a Sasquatch. Let's take a closer listen. It sounds like a strange whooping noise. As Chase seemingly moves closer to the source of the sounds, his breathing gets faster and more labored, but he forges on anyway. Here, right now, I'm starting to get lightheaded. I really don't feel good right now. And as I kept going, I started feeling nauseous. I got to a point where I was like, well, I just kind of want to get out of here and lay down. So I've done some research on, on unusual animal sounds. So a lot of uh, like canines make weird noises, but nothing that would make the sounds that are in the video, at least not that I know from Pennsylvania. Once Chase shares the video, it racks up over 600,000 views. Field researcher Ken Gerhardt says the animal sounds recorded by Chase are all too familiar. I've actually heard similar vocalizations, and these are definitely attributed to the Bigfoot phenomenon. What's more, Gerhardt thinks Chase may be experiencing Omoe, a phenomenon first described in Native American folklore dating back two centuries. Omoing is said to be an overwhelming energy experienced in close proximity of a Sasquatch. It manifests itself in a variety of symptoms, including temporary paralysis. I feel good. So Omawing is described as a type of infrasound. The theory behind predators utilizing this infrasound is that it is a way to disrupt, confuse, or disorient their prey animals. If Bigfoot actually exists, then Omawing may be a predatory mechanism, or maybe it's a defense mechanism like a skunk's odor. So there are really two questions here, folks. First, what made these sounds and second, is there anything to this theory of Omoing? Soundscape ecologist Ben Gottesman breaks down the sound waves. In order to find out what these alleged sounds are, let's compare them to some of the mammals in Pennsylvania. Gottesman starts with elk, which are known to produce bugle calls like this. It really isn't a match. The frequency range doesn't match up. The harmonic characteristics don't match up. Up next, we have coyotes. The frequency range is much higher at around 650 hertz. That's barely at the upper range of the alleged whoop. Gottesman is unable to make any match, but professor of biology Floyd Hayes says that infrasound is for real, and while humans can't hear it, they can feel it. In fact, scientists believe tigers can produce a roar under 20 hertz below the human hearing range. That has the power to stun or paralyze an animal. Also, the lower the frequency, the farther the sound can travel. Infrasound is something that several large species of animals can produce, and 
Uh, some human vocalists are supposedly capable of producing infrasound. But Hayes has a bone to pick with the idea that Chase is suffering from Oma wing or any sort of infrasound attack. His behavior just doesn't make sense. He's not feeling well. He doesn't leave the area and he doesn't go to relax somewhere. He still stays there and talks. After further analysis, Dr. Gottesman says that the sounds recorded by Chase Floyd resemble another set of alleged Bigfoot recordings he's analyzed for us in the past. When I was listening to the alleged sounds, I couldn't help but think back to Ron Moorhead's Sierra sounds. He's referring to Ron Moorhead's 1970s recordings known as the Sierra sounds, which many consider genuine Bigfoot calls. On top, we have audio from Ron Moorhead's Sierra sounds. I'm just gonna play this series of three whoops and notice how the third one has a special flourish. And now, and if I ran a cross correlation on these sounds, they would be upwards of 99% similar. It's the same sound. Down to the tape recording artifact present in the Moorhead tape. This video is a hoax. So while we can't rule out the possibility that Oma Wing is real and terrifying, it wasn't the cause of Mr. Floyd's symptoms. Our verdict, this is a hoax. These sounds are a copy of the alleged Bigfoot recordings made in the early 1970s. If you have any solid evidence of Oma Wing, please let us know. When Apollo 11 touched down on the moon, Neil Armstrong famously said, the eagle has landed. Now when recent image from Mars has people asking, are there already birds on the red planet? at an altitude of about 12 kilometers from the surface of Mars. March 2021. Each shield set. Skycam maneuver has started, about 20 meters off the surface. Tango Delta. Touchdown confirmed. Perseverance safely on the surface of Mars. After a dramatic landing on Mars, NASA's Perseverance rover is looking for signs of ancient life, either primitive forms of bacteria or strands of DNA. To get its bearings, it takes a panorama of four images, and in the third frame, it snaps this. A bizarre object appears suspended over the Martian surface. Zoom in, and it's clearly something thin and elongated, seemingly out of place. Just minutes after NASA downloads the image, social media lights up with posts about aliens and UFOs. Zooming into the image, you can see its shape really closely resembles a bird in flight. Let's not just take McCarthy's word for it. Here's a bird in flight on Earth. We pixelate it to the same degree as the Perseverance image, and we put it slightly out of focus. Practically a match, right? Percival Lowell, America's preeminent astronomer of the early 1900s, studied Mars with a telescope for 15 years. Lowell saw lines on the surface and grew convinced that they were irrigation canals to transport water from melting polar ice. He took this as evidence of intelligent life on the Red Planet. In the 1960s, the Mariner missions captured detailed images of the surface, and it turned out that Lowell's canals were actually a string of craters. But at least part of Lowell's theory has been proven true. In 2008, NASA's Phoenix Mars lander discovered ice under the Martian surface, so the possibility of life on Mars isn't out of the question. The Perseverance rover is the largest astrobiology expedition ever launched by NASA. Did it find proof of Martian life within weeks of touchdown? Let's check in with NASA geologist Bob Anderson. First, is this all a hoax? You can tell that this is a real Martian image because the sky is not blue, it's yellow, which is exactly what you would see on the surface of Mars. Dust particles in the Martian atmosphere are high in iron oxide, which absorbs blue light and creates a yellow sky. So what about an aircraft? Believe it or not, a helicopter named Ingenuity hitched a ride with Perseverance. It has successfully flown on Mars at least 11 times. So could Ingenuity be what's in the picture? If you see the shape of it, it's a very distinct box with four legs from it, with the propellers that are turning. And you don't see any of those features in this object here. Okay, so it's not ingenuity, but Anderson does see a familiar shape in the picture. We take a look at this object in real close. It's at more of an elliptical shape, and so it's very indicative of dust particles that we've been studying on Mars with the microscope. 
Winds on Mars can kick up dust storms so big we can see them on Earth. And the dust's red hue gives the planet its color. But Mars dust is electrostatic, which means it clings to everything it touches. So it likely would stick to the camera's sensor or lenses and appear on all four images, not just one. So Anderson has another theory. It actually could be a foreign object from the rover itself. The rover has little blankets and things covered with gold foil to protect it from temperature. And sometimes in the wind and in the sand, those little pieces get worn off. So what we might be seeing is a flyaway piece of insulation or coating. It likely blew off just before the picture was taken, flew out a few feet, then dropped before the next frame. So our verdict, we're going with Bob Anderson. It's not 100% clear, but the bird was likely a flyaway piece of the Perseverance. In 2026, SpaceX hopes to land humans on the red planet. So then we'll definitely be able to say, there is life on Mars. There are no UFOs or strange monsters in this next story. We love those types of mysteries, but this one is a bit different. It features a real-life superhero and the awe-inspiring power of the human body and spirit. It's May 26, 2018 in Paris, France. Lebanese chef Tarek Dandash is getting his hair cut in the city's 18th arrondissement when he hears a big commotion and runs out to the street. <laughs> Suddenly, a Malian immigrant named Mamadou Gassama leaps into action. Mamadou swiftly makes it all the way up to the fourth floor. Then, with the help of a man standing on the next balcony, he pulls the toddler up to safety before the boy's grip gives way. Let's take another look at the video. See how Mamadou seems to launch his body so he can grab onto the rail. Incredible. Of course, free solo climbers can scale sheer rock faces and even skyscrapers, but that requires extensive training and preparation. So how did Mamadou, an everyday guy, instantly acquire such exceptional abilities? Could he be naturally hardwired to put himself at risk for others? Turns out there's a theoretical condition called super altruism. We have super altruists among us, those who really put themselves at risk or who exert a tremendous amount of energy for some other individuals or some cause they truly believe in. This instinct towards super altruism seems to be strongest when trying to save the most vulnerable, like children. So does Mamadou have this amazing selflessness of a super altruist, some extraordinary agility, or both? Let's go to our experts. This guy here is obviously very athletic. You can see that he's able to reach up very high to the next balcony, but he's just free soloing. He's going up there without any kind of safety. He's not even hesitating. Yet remarkably, Mamadou claims to have no climbing experience. So could this ascent be fueled strictly by adrenaline? Superhuman strength is also called hysterical strength by scholars, and it is thought to occur during life or death situations. And it's a short period of time in which humans appear to have this surge of extra strength. And it is often attributed to a rush of adrenaline that flows into the blood. In interviews, Mamadou confirms that after the rescue, he was so afraid he was shaking, a sure sign of an adrenaline rush. But back to that theory, are some folks hardwired to do stuff like this? There could be an altruism gene, a gene that protects not just your children and your genes, but a gene that protects your group, your tribe, your people, to make sure that their genes can propagate into the next generation. Mamadou himself later offered his own explanation. He said his faith in God gave him both the courage and the strength. So we showed the footage to Catholic miracle researcher and engineer Michael O'Neill. Perhaps it was God giving him the inspiration to put his own life on the line and to save this child. He was truly inspired to take this altruism to a whole new level. And though O'Neill doesn't believe this inspired incident meets the criteria of an official Catholic miracle, he does say acts like this can be considered saintly. 
There's a new path to canonization proposed by Pope Francis called ablatio vitae, or the sacrifice of one's own life. This is a classic example of that, that this man, out of love for a stranger, he was willing to risk his own life. Throughout Christian history, the sacrifice of one's life is what it's all about. Our verdict? Mamadou's faith led him to this act of super altruism. His physique enabled him to start the daring climb with no experience, and adrenaline gave him a boost to pull it off. But whether there's a super altruism gene, that's still a mystery. Nearly every country on Earth has at least one legendary creature in its native folklore. But the little Central American nation of Costa Rica, slightly smaller than West Virginia, has several. These creatures are the stuff of stories. But now, one just might have become the stuff of some amazing video. April of 2021, it's nighttime on a rural road in Costa Rica when a security camera picks up this mysterious footage. Let's slow it down and zoom in. It's dark and the footage is grainy, but it appears as if some bizarre creature creeps out of the shadows. It's clearly much larger than the dogs that can be seen cautiously approaching it before it waddles away into the night. Down the street, some men responding to the commotion step into the road and capture additional smartphone footage of the strange creature. Gustavo Martinez runs a local YouTube channel and has a theory. Lo que se puede ver en, en el video es una criatura muy conocida en Costa Rica que se le dice la mona. Field researcher Ken Gerhardt, who studies Latin American folklore, says La Mona Bruja, also known as the Monkey Witch, is known throughout the region. La Mona Bruja is said to be able to transform into the shape of a monkey. Encountering La Mona Bruja is considered to be a portent of impending disaster, illness, death. Essentially, it's just bad news. And as strange as that seems, an even stranger theory soon emerges. Some on the internet feel they see more than four legs, here and here. And that scrabbling movement? Get ready, they think it could be a giant spider. Cliff Berrigman says there are legends. There are stories of the Jeba Fofi, which is this folkloric spider in Central Africa that was apparently observed once by some explorers in the 1930s. Apparently it was a tarantula-like spider in the web that was three to four feet in diameter. But this is a new world sighting. Are there any new world giants? Well, in a way, check out this nightmarish footage captured by a biologist in the Amazon rainforest in 2019. It shows a massive tarantula killing a possum Wow. If there were to be some undiscovered species of spider or another creature, biodiverse Costa Rica would be a logical place to find it. 5,000 new species of animals and plants were discovered there between 2011 and 2013. But is what we see in this video even real? We wanted to know if this is some kind of CGI, so our first stop was to our video forensic analyst, Michael Primo. I haven't been given any real reason to question the authenticity of the video recording. Okay then, we asked wildlife biologist, Dr. Stephanie Shuttler to address the theory that this could be a giant unknown spider species. Spiders couldn't get to this size. They have uh, an exoskeleton and it would be too large and heavy. They also depend on tracheal openings. They don't have lungs. They also have copper-based blood, which isn't as efficient as our iron-based blood. So the oxygen couldn't get throughout their body if it was this big. Professor of biology, Dr. Floyd Hayes, goes through several other options among the known local wildlife. Well, this doesn't look like any known species of mammals that lives in Costa Rica, like a tapir or a peccary or a sloth or a monkey. We don't know of any monkeys that walk with their legs splayed outward like this individual here, so it can't be a monkey. Under closer scrutiny, Hayes thinks he spots a clue in the dark and grainy video. It looks like the rear legs are longer than the front legs, which is why I think it looks to me like a human trying to walk like a crab would walk. Dr. Shuttler agrees and thinks that it's the behavior of man's best friend that provides the conclusive evidence. We see a dog appears to be barking at it, and then it seems to go really close to it. And if that were a real animal, I think the dog would be much more scared and acting more defensive. 
So it turns out this isn't the legendary witch monkey of Costa Rica, and it wasn't a monstrously large spider. Well, we don't think the video was doctored. Our verdict is that this is a hoax. It's just a very flexible person in a costume imitating a crab walk. But we're still not sure why. That's our show for tonight. Be a hero and send us some really cool videos to investigate. And please, people, keep those cameras rolling. <laughs>